everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, we've got, oh, God, the times that we live in, we all know what's going on with, with like, riots and, uh, uh, and, and insurrections, and insurrection, terrorism in, in the U.S. Capitol, right. and the LDS Church, the Marmons officially have something to say about it they so wait in gonna... <laughs> they wait in uh, so, thank god because oh, where would we be what a powerful voice they are in the nation oh so we'll be talking so about wise. those so mormons wise. and their 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 really strong statement <laughs> all right well first though dan yeah let's see where do i want to start let's start with this one you really should have known that before we began oh god dan <laughs> Um, so, Jesus Christ. So, as we just were talking about, um, chaos at the Capitol, um, terrorism at the Capitol. Yeah. All in the name of trying to prevent Joe Biden from becoming the next president. The United States says he was elected to do. Right. Um, and uh, it, it's almost like nobody has learned their their lessons yet um, what? about what, what's been going down. In fact, um, it seems like there are some pastors still in this country, uh, evangelical type pastors, who are doubling down, Dan, oh, yes. on, uh, on who's going to be uh, on, on tr- the next president. And it's yeah. Trump, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> so this is uh, Brandon Burden. Uh, he's uh, the pastor at uh, Kingdom Life in an uh, amazing Frisco no, City, Texas. An amazing last name. He and I'm guessing he is a burden on the city, on on <laughs> on the uh, the economy. Yeah, no kidding. Um, this last Sunday, he told his congregation uh, that they have, in fact, an executive order to keep Trump in office. Dan. Oh. Um, then this, this executive order, it doesn't come, uh, you know, from, uh, from him or from the president. It comes from God himself, Dan. Yeah. He's, uh, he says that, uh, he has, uh, heard prophetic voices that have told him God or or saying that God would hold, told, told them Trump would be president for eight years. That's ridiculous. It's the voices he heard prophetic voices tell that said that they were told by God. I don't know how that works. Uh, Listen, the, we're going to be hearing later on from another pastor who is talking about these same prophetic voices. And uh, the, I understand what's going on. All of these dudes were had literally put all of their eggs Oh, into yeah. this prof- prophecy basket that Trump was going they thought they had it locked down they thought yeah. they had they knew for sure and the reason was just because they were you know going and looking at the polls and the polls looked a- pretty similar to 4 years ago and they thought well okay this is going to go our way we can we're pretty clear you know they yeah. they're, they're they're going to the Trump rallies and seeing so many people and they're going they're they're watching the Biden rallies, which didn't even really exist, you know, he'd bring, he'd talk to a parking lot full of cars because there's a whole fucking pandemic happening, and they go, "What? Twenty five people showed up there. Ha <laughs> ha. He's gonna lose." And then, uh, and then a vote happened. Yeah, indeed. Uh, he says uh, we have an executive order, uh, not from Congress or D.C., but from the desk of the CEO of Heaven. <laughs> The boss of the planet. The boss of the planet. The boss of the planet. That's Um, amazing. He said from his desk in heaven, this is my will. Trump will be in for eight years. Mm. He said it's the responsibility of his congregation and other Christians to execute God's order and alluded to the battle of Jericho. Mm. He says, um, uh, take down the walls of Jericho. The Lord says your Jericho is Washington D.C. That's your fortified city. Like, what is he yeah. telling these people to do? Well, let's get into a little bit more of this whole thing. Um, 
Well, can he we discuss? Can we talk the... about the Battle of Jericho just for a second? Because sure. yeah, okay. the story of the Battle of Jericho is that God said, hey, go genocide those fuckers. Yeah. And then they did. <laughs> yeah. There was no, literally, there was no offense by Jericho. Jericho had not done anything wrong except that they were there where God t- promised the Israelites they could be. Right. So Have literally around, every yeah. reference to the Battle of Jericho including the Jericho marches in Washington, D.C., those are references to a genocide story. Yeah, well, and Dan, it's clear that this is what's on Burden's mind. Um, yeah. at, toward the end of the service, he uh, discussed the need to prepare for a national blackout or any emergency that could occur between Sunday and the inauguration. Um, he told the congregation to stock up on food, water, and gas for generators and to keep their weapons loaded. Good we Lord. are locked and loaded at the burden house. He says, uh, yeah. the pastor then advised the <laughs> people out in the pews that it's illegal to shoot a trespasser on their lawn, but if they can, but they can rather if someone tries to enter their home. Yeah. So, like, hey, these, you know these what? are armed people with... <laughs> I'm pretty excited <laughs> like, that he said, don't shoot edge. people on your lawn. I'm pretty excited that he put that <laughs> little PSA out into the world. Because, frankly, you you, you, you tell people to, you oh, know, I mean, lock and load. And uh, some of those motherfuckers are going to start shooting people from their, from their yeah. uh, window. Well, I mean, he doesn't want them to get in trouble, Dan. Right. Um, and so, so anyway, yeah, he, um, he, he did say that he believes that Yahweh will bring a miracle this week and that Trump will serve as president for another four years. I mean, it's absolutely clear what's on their mind. He may not be telling his, his, uh, uh, congregants to directly. I mean, he kind of is saying that, you know, the whole Jericho story that they should probably go do something about it. But if you're, but if you can't. You defend yourself, right? Right. Like it's 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 so it seems clear to me what he's talking about. Well, he first of all, he is one of these people who is one hundred percent certain that there's a civil war coming. Mm-hmm. Well, I am never too. checking in with the fact that <laughs> like the other side of the civil war is not going to show up. <laughs> like we're not well, planning on a civil war. Yeah. You guys are planning on. I have a friend. This happened to a friend of mine, a, who was minding his business in his house in Daybreak, which if you know Salt Lake, the salt, the greater Salt Lake area, Daybreak is this planned community way out in the fucking boonies. And, uh, and <laughs> they, it, it's, it's basically where Stepford wives live. It is, it's nice, but it's also a little creepy. Anyway, uh, his friend... This friend of mine who is, uh, he goes to church. He's Mormon, uh, ish his, a guy knocks on his door, a guy in his ward. This is a, you know, a fellow parishioner in his, in his Mormon ward knocks on his door. He opens the door. This guy has an AR 15 strapped to his back. Jesus. And he says, Hey, just so you know, I know that we don't, agree on all politics but uh it's okay when the when the war starts i got you uh, and he's like what, what what do you mean we don't agree on politics and he's like well i see that you know every summer you put up a rainbow flag and you know you had a biden flag during the election but that's okay i'm still I, i'll still protect you uh, i'll when be the war. bigger man here <laughs> and it's like Thank you. Like to me, that's the most. You know, it's not like my friend closed the door and was like, "Oh, I feel safer Thank God now. I'm protected." No, it's like call the cops. Uh, there are children in this neighborhood. Are you insane? Yeah, but that's the world. That's the world that we're living in right now. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to take us to Texas, where. Uh, oh, maybe we were just in Texas. Is that where you were? I think it you is. said. Yeah. Well, yeah. I got a story of another Texas pastor, and this oh. guy, this guy's a this guy's a big dude, uh, meaning he's he's got a big congregation, and he built it from nothing. Oh, so like he has a lot to be proud of. Yeah. He has 
He started from nothing, built his, his congregation into a 16,000-person congregation. Oh, my God. Mega church. What? And considering the fact that he could, he was probably taking in plenty of tithing from those 16,000 people, uh, he was not hurting for money. Mm. Uh, which is what, and this is a guy, by the way, who was a spiritual advisor to George W. Bush, including pre presiding over Jenna Bush's wedding. Oh. He, I think he was a spiritual, I think he was actually uh, one of Obama's spiritual advisors too. Anywho, uh, why then, if he's making that kind of money, would he have swindled a fuck ton of investors out of $3.5 million in a just straight up scam. Oh, really? Which he did do. He's just been sentenced to six years in prison for having basically sold a bunch of investors worthless Chinese, quote unquote, uh, Chinese bonds, historical Chinese bonds. Oh, historical. I don't even know what that could mean. Wow. But uh this but yeah. He he literally he personally received about nine hundred thousand dollars and then spread the rest of the money around. Oh. And then when you know, when the other when the investors started to say, Hey, how about that return on investment? Which by the way, any of you, if any of you are listening at home, if someone promises you re returns on your investment that are fifteen times what you put in. And, and and not over the course of you know eighty years, <laughs> run away from that person. That person is trying to swindle you. I think promises of returns are probably not a are good a swindle. Thing. Yeah, any yeah. return. <laughs> like yeah. like like you can't promise. If, you can if you're, you can if you're you can betting say, on <laughs> the this market. This looks good. Yeah. This, you know, and here are the reasons why I think this looks good. But like, yeah. If so, but especially if someone's like, yeah, you know, even just saying you'll double your money in two years, that is a swindle. Yeah. But if he's saying 15 times a return on your investment, how is anyone yeah, that falling should be a red for flag. that? That should be a red flag. Anyway, uh, it, yeah, it turns out it was all a scam and this guy's now going to go to jail. Yeah. Uh, Selling fake he had bonds. the best scam running. <laughs> A tax-free, broad daylight scam that Can no one's going to bother you about yeah. at all. <laughs> he was making a fortune off of exactly the kind of scam that I would run if I had no scruples, uh, which is <laughs> that of a pastor. Yeah, and uh, and yet he 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 threw it all away for Chinese. I guess he the guy threw needed a boat. It all away. He was on top of the world, Dan. He was. And he, 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 had everything. He, had, he had power. He had money. <laughs> and then he was just like, you know what I need in my life? I need a little excitement. Let's do yeah. a scam. He needed to feel will alive, obviously get me Dan. caught. He was feeling a little, little dead. And, like, you know. It's hard. It, these are rough times. Right. Like, we're just not getting <laughs> the yeah. stimulation that we all need. He's, and 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 his you know the the moments of him going into department stores and s you know stealing small things just to feel the rush <laughs> those that was not paying off anymore. <laughs> You're probably not very far from the truth there. Probably not. All right, Dan. Yeah. Um, more fallout from uh, the capital, U.S. capital violence, Dan. Mm. Um, we uh, it's and the reason I'm bringing this one up is because uh, the. The, the organization that's been affected, uh, Give, Send, Go, we, we brought it up last week as uh, they were like, raising money for, oh, one of the Proud Boys. Yeah. I don't, I'm not the, even going to say his This name. is the same org that, that raised money, that was helping to raise money for a defense fund for Kyle Rittenhouse, the, the murderer who went and murdered people. Yep, that's correct. Um, and, uh, and let's see. So they... You know, the, 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 there's there's been sort of a reckoning uh, in corporate America, it seems, over the last uh, week uh, or so. Um, 
largely trying to uh, disassociate themselves from Republicans and in particular Republicans who were trying to overturn the election and whatnot. Well, this is uh, all part of that fallout, I would say. Uh, PayPal has uh, said that it is blocked Give, Send, Go. Um, and uh, that they people will not be able to use PayPal to donate to Give, Send, Go causes. It Good. doesn't really shut down Give, Send, Go. I mean, it doesn't shut them down at all. Um, you can still use like a credit card or whatnot. But PayPal wants nothing to do with it. And I think that's a, I think a that's powerful awesome. statement. Um, they've also, um, PayPal has closed, um, an account held by, uh, Ali Alexander. Um, he's one of the organizers of the Capitol Hill violence. Okay. Um, and, uh, then there was also, um, they have closed an account held by Joy and Liberty. Um, that was one of the groups that helped pay. Uh, for supporters of Trump to travel to Washington, D.C., hmm. uh, where then they formed into mobs and stormed the Capitol. Oh, interesting. So you're telling me that the right wing, who has been claiming all this time that left wing protesters are just paid shills who are, <laughs> who, like, what's his name? Uh, what, what's the billionaire's name that they always pick on because he's Jewish and they're anti Semites? Like Soros? Soros. Soros is just paying all of us to uh to to go to, to you know to 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 do all these protests mm -hmm. when the reason they think that is because they are actually getting paid to go to these things. The yeah, the amount that um the right, the far right uh projects uh on their values and their the ways that they would their do shittiness. things. Yeah, onto the left. I mean, it's not to say that the left is like perfect or anything, but oh, like no. the things that they accuse the left of, like you, you should just immediately go sniff around, yeah, and see because it's it's transparent. It's completely yeah. obvious at this point that they're just telling us what they're up to. Yeah, in totally. their accusations, a accusations of 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 the left. Yeah, exactly. It's, when it's you remarkable. when you hear them say it wasn't us, it was Antifa at the thing, that's yeah. when you know, oh, when Black Lives Matter was erupting into violence, that wasn't actually Black Lives Matter starting that. That was them right. in, you know, dressed in all black with a black umbrella breaking the windows of buildings to make the Black Lives Matter people look bad. That was I mean, we have video of that. We know that that happened. Of course they attribute the same tactics to our side. Right. They think everybody is fucking unprincipled and bullshit. Yep. All right. Well, I'm glad that... I, I hope... You know what? I hope more companies cut them off. I hope I, I hope all it's, of the credit card companies just say no. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've heard about, like, all the, the you know, Fortune 500 companies, essentially, who are just, like, saying, yeah, we're not going to give... Some of them have said we're not we're we're stopping all political donations moratorium right okay fine. okay some are some are specifically like being a little bit more clear that it, okay no we're cutting off the Republicans and then others are like we, okay that hundred and thirty or whatever that voted um, against a democratically held election right um, those are the ones that we're cutting off and so they better like, be there, there, there's a reckoning that's happening amongst uh, america's largest corporations and saying we need to be more careful about who we support and give money to yeah but there's also this thing where they're all a little nervous because they feel like they they're a little unmoored at the moment they they don't have a political party that's <laughs> yeah. kowtowing to them at the moment yeah that's <laughs> so true they're like they're a little worried because they know they're not going to get much from the Dems or not. They're not going to get everything they want from the Dems. Right. And the Republicans are a little too focused on, you know, overthrowing an American election. <laughs> overthrowing so. them, their damn selves. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Uh, well, I have a little bit of good news. Oh, what's that? Uh, this came to us, to me from the, uh, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, our friends at the Foofurf. Yeah. Uh, who are reporting that uh, H.R. 6100, the congressional, uh, which is a, a bill that just got signed into law 
for was uh, was a it was a key priority for the uh, Congressional Free Thought Caucus, mm. and uh, and the thing is, this is an anti female genital mutilation bill. Oh wow! They've just made it illegal to uh, to to do FGM on children on young girls, uh, which is amazing. Hooray! Now you might say to yourself. Hang on, I thought they passed one of those, which they did. This is the second one because back because a federal court in 2018 knocked down an existing statute uh, oh, that God. was uh, they ruled it unconstitutional because uh, they said Congress lacked the authority to enact it, so they they fixed it. They enacted this new bill under a different statute. Oh, or whatever. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the verbiage statute. Maybe that that's wrong. But under a different thing, they did it uh, under the Commerce Clause, oh. which uh, which gives Congress very broad powers indeed. I'm not sure. So what how are they saying you can't be paid? Uh, yeah, to perform I, it? no, I don't know. Like, I how does that work? Right, you can't you can't sell the leavens. I don't know how that ends up being commerce, but somehow they found a way. Well, well good. I. I I hope it works. I hope it does too. Oh God! What and I hope that eventually they do a similar thing for male genital mutilation. But we won't get that's into that. That's going to be won't... a long time. Dude. Yeah, that's going to be a longer that's time. A, but at that's least a, at that's least a long slog. The young we, we women would do are, better are sick. just to change sort of public attitudes. Yes. About it. But yeah, we'll, this one we'll, should we'll have been where we need to be much sooner. This one should have been an that. easy slam dunk, considering that the so people weird. that this will piss off are the are the Muslims, and uh, I think even the even the Republicans and are happy to piss like off mainstream the Muslims. Muslims right? right, like it's a radical fringe of Islam, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I think it's more of an African cultural thing than it is an Islamic uh, thing. But it's, I think you're right about that. Yeah, it's connected to Islam, so it's no, like you're right. I I remember that now. No. Um, Dan, yeah. Speaking of Congress, um, we, we have are to? Uh, in the 117th Congress yes. of the United States. They're sitting um, there. They, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and as I believe we've brought up at least one time before in the course of the show, um, and maybe uh, more than that, uh, is, is the religious breakdown. The religious composition ah. of the Congress, oh, since sure. it's a new Congress. And for those of you who might be a little confused about 107, that's the 117th Congress, and we know the country's a lot older than that, um, <laughs> it's only, they uh, count, they count the Congress by who's in it, by the terms. Right. right? And so every two years you get a new Congress. Right. Um, and so, all right. So, so breakdown, Dan. Okay. Religious breakdown. Break it down. Now, it will come as no surprise to anybody, right, uh, that uh, Christianity is going to be a little overrepresented. What? Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't dare. <laughs> and that our little group is wildly unrepresented. Yeah. Um, in fact, not represented in Congress. Um, now, and, that is not true. We have one, don't we? We have uh, one unaffiliated. Yeah. Boom, baby. Uh, that's, and we have one other. Only one and, other? And we have 18 who said that they don't know or just refused. Or, or don't want to <laughs> answer. Like uh, Somebody comes asking a member of Congress, what religion are you? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> right. Don't know. They, they definitely know, but they definitely don't want to answer. <laughs> Which is interesting about that one. Since we're talking about it, we might as well just say that that, makes, that, that means that 3.4% uh, of uh, Congress uh, doesn't know their religious affiliation <laughs> or refuse to answer the question. Um, and the corresponding number in, or, 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 uh, in the U.S., the, the broader U.S. population, 2%. Yeah. Right? So that's interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll loop back around to that, <laughs> right? Um, let's see. Uh, Jewish, 
members of Congress. 33 yeah. Jewish uh, members of Congress. 33? Uh, is that what you said? 33. 3-3. Three, three. Uh-huh. That, seems, that seems wildly overrepresented. Yeah, that's uh, that means that the Jews make up six point two percent of Congress, while only making up two percent of the U.S. population. Yeah, um, Mormons, Dan. They tend, How many Mormons they tend do you to think? be overrepresented usually. This is interesting, Dan. But yeah, I don't. How I many mean, do you think? How many do you think are in Congress at the moment? It's way down. Yeah. Because uh, it's other than high. other than the Utah reps, I don't know. Is there uh, maybe there are maybe couple, so- there clearly are a couple more because we would have four plus the two senators, so we have six, uh-huh. right? F- just from the state of Utah, and then there are three more. Okay, yeah, you states. got like an Arizona person, maybe, maybe a, an or, Idahoan. Yeah, so that's clearly where they usually come from. Um, so the Inner Mountain West is usually where you're going to see these people coming right. from. Um, Dan, this is down from its historic high of 17. Yeah. Back in uh, the 106th Congress, uh, that was uh, 1999 to the and the and 2000. Oh, the good old um, days were the two years. Um, yeah, I mean, and then it's kind of fluctuated a little bit, but then it's had this like drop off since, uh, um, really. 2016 yeah. um it's just been going down 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 um ca- the number of catholics has considered as uh cons- has consistently increased over really? time um going back to 1961 there were 100 uh catholics in congress and there are now 158 huh um and over the same period of time protestants have gone down from 398 <laughs> down to 294 now um to know the total it's 300 uh i'm sorry 531 is the total uh for the n- members of congress um Jesus. because it's counting both houses and oh, i right, believe yeah, yeah. um also uh non-voting members are probably in that tally that would make sense to me um it's because that that's a thing that exists there are non-voting right. members um for people not familiar with the ludicrous intricacies of representative our representative system um our, our, as you're discovering our non-representative <laughs> system yeah it's really fucked up um so yeah uh let's see um number so eight. yeah tell me Maybe. how how this relates to the general population we talked a little bit about oh, that yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah. so christian christians Right. Yeah. Um, there are 468 of those 531 members of Congress who are Christian. Uh, that represents 88.1 percent of Congress, um, and Christians are only 65 percent of the country. Yeah. Right. Um, Protestants are still way overrepresented at 55 percent in Congress, 43 percent in the general population. Um, Baptists are a little underrepresented. Um, well, that's nice. Which is interesting. Um, sort of your non-denominationals are underrepresented, um, suggesting that maybe we just like to know who you yeah. are. Unspecified <laughs> or other Christians, or other. Oh, this is unspecified Protestants. Okay. <laughs> I'm just a Protestant. That's a dumb line. Yeah. Um, eight make up eighteen percent of Congress. Uh, while only 5% of U.S. adults. Um, and then other groups that uh, Muslims obviously are underrepresented. And then I wanted to come back around uh, to the Mormons. You were saying, oh, nine seems like like that's probably overrepresenting. Um, uh, that makes uh, that means that they make up 1.7% of Congress and Mormons make up 2% of the United States population. So, right. Um, it, statistically, probably right. You know, that's there fine. That's pretty close. Um, and then Hindus are underrepresented as, as you would assume, uh, <laughs> Unitarian Universalists, um, are probably accurately represented. There are three of them. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and Unitarian Universalists make up less than 1% of the U S population, which and, 3% and, would be, or three total members would be less than 1%. <laughs> so, right. But, so and for those who aren't familiar with the Unitarian Universalists, those are atheists who don't like that word. 
exactly. So, I mean, in the, in here, right? The in, inside this don't know or refuse to answer and maybe inside that Unitarian Universalist number, there are, I, in my heart of hearts, I have to believe that amongst those 21 people, there has to be a few atheists, right? Yeah. And it's just absolutely, and, and to be honest, amongst all those Christians, there are probably a, a number of atheists. Yeah. Right? If you think Mitch McConnell believes in a God, you are, <laughs> you have not been paying attention. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, um, not that it, I want to like just associate us with him, but come right. on, that is just, a godless um, man. <laughs> It just uh, it, it highlights, you know, obviously something we've been talking a lot about on the show, which is the need to have atheists in office. Um, and I, my attitude is, even if you if you can't run openly as an atheist, I'd still rather have you in office um, than than somebody else. Um, but we need visibility, yeah. right? We we desperately need people who are able to kind of just skirt the issue. If it's, if you're in an area, never lie about it if you're asked. Right. Yeah. But like, you don't have to run as an atheist <clears throat> or, or people who you want to run for office. To they, you as could. we've learned. You could. But, but getting back to the whole idea of like visibility. We like, do need just, people we need open. It. We desperately yeah. need it's it. It's true. It's but true. But it's so hard. Still. It's yeah. We're doing it. But you can do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I am going to talk a bit about Dave Ramsey, which I, I don't know how many of our listeners will be familiar with, with Mr. Yeah. Ramsey. We don't, he doesn't come up on this show. It's thank yeah. God. It's he should come up on this show. Cause he's a yeah. tool. Uh, <laughs> and he is a, he's an evangelical Christian personal finance guy. Like he's his yeah. big, his whole empire is built not on preaching the good word, but on sni- on inserting the good word into uh, into lectures about how credit card debt is bad, so it's, he's, it's he's all about he's he's trying to to be a, a you know the the guru of personal finance for Christians. I don't know why you need to be affiliated with Christianity other than christians are always susceptible to scams run by other christians yeah it's the he's more trustworthy right them. exactly right. Uh, which is yeah and that's a real thing you by the way be. scams run by christians uh sucker christians in all the time hence mm-hmm. uh the mormon affili- uh, affinity for multi-level marketing but that's okay that's a story for another day uh <laughs> Anyway, the, you know, he runs his Ramsey runs his whole thing out of Nashville, Tennessee, and Religion News Service RNS had a very interesting piece this week about how Ramsey claims to be trying to build the best place to work in America. His uh his entre leadership uh his whole in, his whole thing he he wants it to be the best place to work in America. Except he doesn't. It is he runs it like a little. Uh, it 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 is. I'm, I'm going to avoid words like I, w- I was going to say some uh, Nazi references. That's not true, but it's not great. Uh, he he does things like, for instance, he he has a whole thing about how when you hire somebody, you're also hiring their family. So. He likes to do spouse interviews as well as interviewing the potent, the candidate for our job. Isn't that because illegal? I don't know. I don't. I mean, he presents the whole. His whole thing is a ministry, right? So oh, okay. laws don't apply to anything that he does. If it's officially a ministry, yeah, that's probably how he's getting away with something. I, I, I can't mean, imagine I that that minister. would be. I, I, that just seems absurd to me. That like, yeah. I mean, what about people who don't have an awesome spouse? Like, yeah. What if you're married to some? What if you are married to somebody who's kind of fucked up? So, right. Well, but he thinks that that could have, that that'll affect your job performance. So he doesn't want that shit. Uh, and he, Jesus. you know, he basically, and and he's been a nightmare about COVID. So ever since COVID, he has been like 
He's mocked it on his radio show. He has he you know he had a big a big convention scheduled for May, like a big live event thing in May, and mm-hmm. refused to give back anybody's money who didn't want to go because they didn't want to catch a deadly disease. Oh so my god. He literally said We have people calling in. They're wanting to cancel stuff for a live event in May. Let me tell you how much of your money I'm going to give back to you if you don't come to the come for the coronavirus in May. Zero. I am keeping your money. You are a wuss. Wow. Is what he said to yeah, the people some, who listen to his show. I can tell you right now, he's a terrible boss. Oh. Like you like didn't even have to start the story. Like it's clear. Like, the man's an asshole, right? Yeah. Like and probably not going to find a really good boss and a complete asshole. No. Uh, and here, <laughs> just <laughs> to confirm that, just to give you a sense of like how bi- how shitty an organization this is, I'm going to read to you from the reply that they sent back to the Religion News Service when they, when they sent a request for comment. Because, you know... That's what journalists do. They say, hey, right. I'm writing a story about your organization. Here's what I'm writing. Do you have any comment about it? And, you know, this he had collected stories from former employees. He had, you know, watched v- videos of internal uh, meetings. He had gotten emails. So it's not like this was just hearsay. <clears throat> he had corroborated all these stories. Here is what... Uh, the organization sent back. Thanks for reaching out. We want to confirm for you that you are right. We are horrible, evil people. We exist simply to bring harm to our team, take advantage of our customers, and spread COVID. And you figured it all out. Wow. Who would have guessed that an unemployed guy, oh, I'm sorry, a freelance reporter would be the one to show us how horrible we are so that we can change and let you and 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 to let the the world know of our evil intent secrets and complete disregard for decency but you did it wow responding (laughs) that's just that's just one part of one (laughs) paragraph the thing just goes on and on and on toxic sarcasm it's just like, like what the fuck is wrong with you bitchy little <laughs> teenager tone <laughs> that is yeah that was from public.relations at ramseysolutions.com i i mean i wonder what their uh employee manual reads like right <laughs> i i mean oh you want a day off right exactly yeah i pity <laughs> the fool who goes into hr for anything <laughs> oh, your wife's having a baby. Oh, isn't that nice? We met her during the interview process, <laughs> and she seems like a tough lady. She's crazy. You'll be fine. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Christians are like the actual worst. Anyway, <laughs> if you guys have anything you'd like to say about this, or, you know, if you want to defend dave ramsey and say hey i got my whole personal finance sorted out because of that guy feel free right into us <laughs> podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424-666-8442 stick around guys there is definitely more show coming up Dan. Hey. You know, sometimes I say things and it turns out that I didn't really mean it, but then it turns out that I really did mean it. And that's what I meant. The first thing I meant, uh, that's what I meant the whole time. Right? Isn't that how it works, Dan? And sometimes other people say things and I'm positive that they're right, but then they're wrong. And I'm positive that they were wrong. And I never said that they were right. And somebody else said that they were right. And this whole thing is a mess. But (laughs) Pastor Greg Locke the uh the the, whom by the way i follow on twitter and it's delightful all of the time oh Uh, really well first of all he's a big twitter guy so he's constantly posting 
Mm. But he's also just a petulant little titty baby the whole time. (laughs) And he is still insistent that Trump is going to win uh, in the end. So still it's it's just January 15th. Yeah. He's yeah. still convinced. It's more. Well, that's it's faith. You it know, that's literally what that is. gets more fun by the day. He's a man of faith, Dan. A deep, yeah. abiding faith. Yeah. Uh, but he has started to hedge. Uh, he's still holding on to it, <laughs> but he has started to hedge. And uh, and we found some audio that is uh, him hedging on that. Now what's floating around on the internet is all of these people that let me use the word loosely, prophesied that Trump was going to remain in the presidency for the remaining four years. Now they're all being called false prophets, and so here's what they're doing. Now they're sending out these letters and these statements saying, well, somehow or another, we got it wrong, which, by the way, they're going to feel very, very stupid in a couple of weeks. So let me just say something. If you go back and watch every video from this platform or any video that I've done, even the one from the tree that I shared a couple of months ago or a month and a half ago about the dream, you will notate that I am very careful not to say the word of the Lord told me to tell you that Donald Trump is going to remain the president for the next four years. I have said I have good authority. I believe with all of my heart. I am a thousand and ten percent confident. But never one time did I say that Donald Trump is going to remain the president because the Lord told me that he was. Now, I may have a strong opinion on that, but I've been careful not to willy-nilly use those phrases because when God tells me something, I want to make sure that God told me that something. Now, that being said, I'm not trying to backpedal because there is one conspiracy theory in the world right now and only one. The real conspiracy theory are the foolish people that think Joe Biden is actually going to be the president of the United States on January the 20th. You have lost your mind if you believe that. I don't know what he means. So. What is he saying? Oh, he, good God. It's, I guess it's not prophecy as long as you only make people think it's prophecy, right? right? Like, I've got it on good authority. Right. Well, you're a preacher for Christ's sake. Whose authority do you think we're thinking of? What, right? did, like, what did you want us to believe you were yeah. saying? Because let me tell you, <laughs> if Donald Trump had been reelected... He would be spouting off about what a fucking awesome prophet he is. Oh, one hundred percent. Him, you are right? so right about that. That is that is exactly the right point because he would be. Yeah, you would not be able to shut him up for ten years Mm-mm. about his prophetic, about the one time he was right as a prophet. Oh my god, because that's the truth too, right? Yeah, like right. when when have any of these guys ever been right? Well, it's just psychics, right? It's like yeah. you take credit for the hits, you yeah. dismiss the misses, you 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 gloss over the misses, mm-hmm. so that you know you you put out thirty prophecies, and if two of them hit, you're a prophet. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, With an accuracy rate of you know right six percent, seven percent. It's uh, uh, it, it's amazing, but yeah, these prophets all over the. You, we've talked about these prophets who were certain who have prophesied. God told me. We've played their audio. God mm-hmm. told me Donald Trump's going to win this election. God told me God Donald Trump's going to have four more years. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I got news for you, man. Ye, 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 no. Yeah, that's not, not true. Not only is he not going to get these four years that you're convinced that he was going to get. Um, and now you might think you might kind of be like, well, he's going to run again, right? He keeps saying he's going to run. So maybe that one. No, I'm fairly confident that when Mitch McConnell comes around as he's indicating, he will and votes to convict the man in, in the impeachment process, um, that he's, that there's going to be enough other Republicans who are just fucking done with it. Yeah. Right. And, and who Mitch McConnell is giving cover to, you know, you know, like I, I'm, I don't, I'm not 100%. Right? You know, you, the, wait, you're, you're saying you're not prophesying. <laughs> I'm not prophesying in any way, shape or form that it, that Senate will actually convict, convict Donald Trump. Um, but I think there's a chance. I and think, I, I think it'll I happen. I think you're right. I sincerely hope that it does. Um, and because it would just be, 
it would be a glorious, glorious thing just to have because it'll prevent him from of, running off of our uh, this this weight off of our shoulders, right? Yeah, of the of him potentially coming back. Yeah, and it will totally like cut him off at the knees as far as like his influence in the party, um, because they'll know that he's irrelevant in a in a real like as the as a potential future president. Here, right? Here's here's what I just realized. Maybe they heard true prophetic words from God saying that Trump would get four years and they just didn't realize it meant prison. <laughs> if it's only four years, Dan, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. Well, it's four years. I don't know. You should go and listen to the, the most recent uh, opening arguments uh, podcast with our yeah. friend Andrew Torres. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause he was, he did, he made a very compelling ca- case that uh, that Georgia has got him by the balls with that phone call that he made. Oh yeah. So that's that's one to four years just for that, and oh, then nice. New New York will have its way with him. Is so, and that's not something that he can pardon his way out of because uh, it's a state crime instead of a federal crime. Right. If he doesn't do the blanket pardon for himself that he fully intends to do, then he's which, fucked every which way. Yeah, but I mean then. That'll have to go to the Supreme Court because it's not clear that a president has that authority. It right. makes no sense for a, any president to have the authority to future proof themselves against well, their own wrongdoings. It's just asking a, for a president to do bad things. Right. 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 If he can it's, just it's then like, at the, he I or have, she at the end of their term can just be like, oh, and by the way, all that bullshit. Yeah, you can't come after me for it. Right. Well, fuck that. No fucking way. And if that is what, if if that's how it ends up being, we've got some fixing to do. Yeah, on that constitution because oh. that's that would be fucked up if I that think, were allowed. I think we can all admit that our constitution <laughs> has a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah, no kidding. I don't and think it'll be has. done. I don't think it's going to happen, but it needs to. Yeah. It's it's kind of that it's one of the projects that uh, in our infrastructure that needs to be seen to. We'll see when <laughs> anybody gets to it. All right. Well, we had some folks write into us, uh, and uh, I wanted to read some of their things. We skipped we skipped over this last week, so mm. uh, sorry everybody. We definitely won't get to everybody, but uh, thanks to a few people. Anne wrote into us. Hi guys, listening to the Coup Show. Uh, mm. And Frank, I agree with you about social media. I'm afraid mm. the social media problem is bigger than we think, and I'm not sure what can be done about it. On mm. a positive note, your commentary has given me the incentive to once again put the social media away. I've mm. been doom scrolling since Wednesday, and it's time to do something to go do something useful. Yeah, good. Yeah, I great. applaud that. Um, seriously, like if you're on the fence about your social media or if you felt the impulse to do away with your social media or especially if you felt like it's been really like detrimental to you yeah lately walk away you're not required to do that my life i can only speak about my experience so much better without social media so yeah there you go i believe that Mine, I still like it, so I'm still on it. I have no problem. And that, and that's for you. You can go swim in that toxic cesspool. That's fine. Uh, I, I've cleaned my my end of the pool. <laughs> as uh, as Doug likes to say from from how, from the other show, uh, he he likes to say there's no there, there's no peeing section in the in a public pool. Uh, so maybe you can't just that's clean not your true at all. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the I, I think the idea is the whole thing is basically it's, you're either you're being in it or you ain't, and let's <laughs> let's face it, they are. Anyway, uh, uh, about last week, also, d- dear Frank and Dan, good show. I needed that. Uh, it's been an nice. awful week, what with the sedition and all. That, <laughs> those of you who don't recall, last week uh, we changed the format of our show a little bit because we were. Feeling kind of a yeah, little, little punch drunk, a little punchy about the whole mm. uh, yeah. storming the castle. Uh, Lynn goes on. I, I've I have been to many huge anti-war protests in Washington D.C. The police presence has often been just overwhelming. Mm. I am shocked at how these thugs got to shit in the Capitol 
break things, yep. threaten to take hostages, and we're just allowed to wander away. Yep. Uh, and you well, know, Lynn gives surprise me because when you look when you look like the people you're policing. <laughs> oh God! Well, I mean, half of those police you, probably are sympathetic to it. So yeah, exactly. I hope everybody gets fired. Just, yeah. Well, no, but there's there's this thing in that that you often don't suspect of, you know, um, people who again are basically you you see yourself in right, right. Uh, that that they would p do any wrong right right yeah anyway uh. Yes, Lynn Lynn goes on to to give examples of of protests where like for instance 1800 people including 300 plus bicyclists were arrested in New York City during the Republican National Convention in 2004 and were brutalized. She gives a bunch of other examples. Sorry, Lynn gives a bunch of other examples. I don't know if Lynn is a I don't know Lynn's pronouns. Anyway, and now to see these motherfucking traitors with bombs, long guns and zip ties who were trying to overthrow our government and our votes being coddled by the cops is just disgusting. Thank you so much for talking about it. I really appreciated your show. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here's some good news. This is from a few weeks ago. You'll recall a couple weeks ago, we had our good friend, Teresa English, our good friend. We met her over the thing, but she's an awesome person. Teresa English, who was, who ran for office as an atheist. Uh, came on the show and talked about her experience. And, uh, you know, that combined with our continued press for people uh, of non-belief to run for office and to, to engage in the political system on whatever level they can, we've inspired some folks. Oh, nice. So, uh, uh, James wrote in to say, uh, Frank, Frank and Dan, so glad you're starting to ramp up the political activism on your show. I've never run for office or been paid staff or anything like that. That's not for me. What I have done is volunteer work for p the past couple of decades. Knocked on oh. doors, made phone calls, dropped off literature, and even hosted some house parties for candidates. Since nice. I've been a proud since I'm a proud Democrat in Arizona, my candidate normally loses, which sucks. <laughs> but the past two cycles, some of them are now winning. Believe me when I say nice. that I that uh, when I say that took a lot of prep work. My advice to people thinking about volunteering on a campaign is do it's fun. Most of the time, it's great when you can connect with a, with a person this past cycle, I helped several people register to vote. I walked a couple of people through the entire process from how to get to a, get a ballot to where to go uh, and where to research the candidates. Helping a first time voter is simply a great feeling. Get involved on the local level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the presidential campaign gets a lot of attention, They have, but they have enough volunteers. You don't have to be another one. The place I found that makes to make a real difference is at the city, county, or state level. Uh, can you name your rep uh, to your state government? Not many people can, which is crazy because they have more influence over your day-to-day -day life than whoever represents you in Washington, D.C. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a great point. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, and great. I love that you're out there volunteering. Everybody should be doing it. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then because Rob. Not, and, and that's the thing. And we've heard this from a, a couple of people have pointed this out that, you know, not everybody can run. And then when we're saying run, um, we're trying to, to, to speak to the, to the people who've had it on their mind. Yeah. Right. And so for everybody else, there are other things that you can be doing and that we can be doing. And right. So. And you can find um, you can find secular candidates to support also. Absolutely, yeah. And encourage you know if you know somebody who you, who who should be running, you should you can encourage them. Like our friend Rob, who wrote into us. Yeah, we don't know Rob. Anyway, Rob <laughs> says, "Hey, Frank and Dan, just wanted to let you know that thanks to you, I've decided to look into running for alderman in Ward Three in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois." That sounds fancy. Uh, yeah, I know. Alderman. Alderman. That's we cool. don't even have yeah. those here. No, uh, I've never known is what that is, like but I city assume council it's a yeah, kind of I, thing, maybe? something like that. Uh, <laughs> after listening to your guests, I know that my next step seems to be to bone up on the local politics here and expand on my platform, which currently only has one item at the moment. 
<laughs> I wanted to thank you for the efforts uh, you folks have put into this because I absolutely agree with you that we need non-believers to have seats at the table and voices in the conversation. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Alderman Rob, uh, let us know. I think we have some people uh, who um, who are in the Chicago area to talk to. I don't well, that's know. True. Yeah. I don't know if uh, if ter- I don't know where Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, is, but. Uh, Let's but write back to us if you're interested and we'll try and hook you up with some other people. If you are also if any of our other listeners are in that area and could give Rob any guidance, let us know. We'll we'll try and uh, hook you guys up or be a future volunteer or be a future volunteer. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, to 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 put people together. So, yeah, so let us know on that. And uh, and there you go. Do we have some folks to thank for the week? Dan, you know that we do. Woohoo! <laughs> we actually, um, we've, we've got a handful to thank. Um, and sorry for uh, putting it off a week. Yeah. You know? um, but, but we've got two weeks worth of, of thanks to get out. Um, we have a new deacon by the name of Mark. Praise Welcome be. Welcome and thank you, Mark. Uh, we have a new teacher by the name of Paul. Thank you very much. Amazing. Um, we have a new priest by the name of Mick. Oh. And Dan. Uh-oh. We have two new prophet seers and revelators. What? I hope they don't have counter prophecies because I won't know what to do with that. <laughs> we have Sabrina. Amazing. And Caitlin. Oh. So thank you to the both of you. Oh, um, you, all, all of these people have now been uh, 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 given, have been anointed with the, pr- the, the, the uh, why can't I think of the word? I wanted to say prophecy. Holy oil? No, the priesthood. That's the priesthood. what it is. The wow. holy priesthood. Congratulations. <laughs> you have magic powers now. You are amazing. Ooh. And all you had to do was give us money, which is amazing. So uh, thank you guys so <laughs> As much. As any good priestcraft works. Da- exactly. Um, also, we have uh, someone else to thank, Dan. Yes, Our indeed. Our Lord and Savior, Dennis. Hey, Frank. Dan. Listen, the LDS Church... Our church, the Mormon church, not our church anymore, but the church. Dear God, the, no. Yeah. That we were raised in. The, uh, the yeah, We didn't choose that. Anyway, they have seen the horrors that have been happening in these United States. As we all have, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and also they saw, as we did, I don't know if our listeners know this, but at least one of the people guys who stormed the capitol last week <laughs> was dressed as a, a a hero from the book of mormon uh a very adorable chubby captain moroni uh <laughs> who's a different moroni by the way than the one on the top of all of the mormon temples but that's a whole different that's story important. that is an important uh and he was carrying a banner that that has a whole history in the in the book of mormon that is a terribly worded stupid thing anyway the mormon church couldn't deny that their people were involved in this shit and they've been you know they've been seeing the writing on the wall for this for a minute so they came out with a very very gently worded letter because they can't piss anybody off uh, or they don't want to piss anybody off but they did uh and they, they basically it was just With great concern, we observe the political and cultural divisions in the United States and around the world. We condemn violence and lawless behavior, including the recent violence in Washington, D.C., and any suggestion of further violence. So they're basically trying to be like, don't, you guys. Um, Which, that's good. They should. Oh yeah. They, they they should not want that, but it also, you know, it's not a hard position to take. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and you'd think it would be uh, obvious, etc. But you know, so they do this, and of course, 
Uh, it gets posted on the social media. And I can't, again, I have to reiterate this. We've talked about this before. The Mormon church that I grew up in, the Mormon church that I have known for 45 years of my life has yeah. changed. Because 20 years ago, I would not be able to imagine the more the church itself coming out with a statement and then thousands of members of that church screaming foul crying bullshit saying this is not right but that's what happens now it's amazing these mormons uh you know it gets posted on social media and they're all just i just completely calling foul on this thing saying they've you lost know, control dan yeah they have. salt lake has lost control of the church they have and look this is they a church come down hard on these people this is a church that is not that has never allowed you to question the first presidency you're not allowed no. to question no. the church but uh woohoo they you know the the far left is questioning the church on gay rights and on feminist issues and the far right is just i mean here's a guy who said wait a minute is this the same first presidency that congratulated biden on a stolen election when people's voices are not heard their actions are amazing just wow. just so many people entirely up in arms it's wow. it is I mean, and then, of course, there are the people who are like, this is a nice message, and I agree. And then other people <laughs> jumping down their throats about it. It, it is remarkable, um, and it, which is why, I mean, and we, I don't know. I don't know if we're right or wrong about our, our projection that the, the LDS church is going to break in, 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 two, <laughs> in half. It's you breaking. Know. It's stretching. Um because it, again, we've been out of it for so long, and we haven't been part of that evolution. But from our perspective, you're absolutely right that like this is uh, how is it not already broken, right? From from kind of where I'm sitting, right? right? Where it's like this can't that this, this cannot last. This cannot stand. Like outright, just complete doubting the prophet. Out, outright calling them out yeah right yeah like it's, literally it's like the prophet says hey don't be violent and then you got here's another guy saying i absolutely concur but <laughs> when oh, freedoms and our god-given constitutional rights are hanging by a thread and our savior even stated to take up a sword in the name of freedom I know we all need to be peaceful, but we can only turn the cheek so many times. It does say so many times. I didn't, that wasn't my bad reading. Wow. It's just like, it, I agree, but no, is what that one says. Uh, it's, we're in an astounding time. This is just, I used to feel like I knew what the world looked like, what this, uh, I, I'm just, I'm befuddled because I, I used to feel like I could predict things pretty well and I was good at it. I could predict who was going to win an election, uh, with pretty decent accuracy. I could predict how different P different, you know, political actors were going to carry themselves or, or yeah. respond to certain things. Prophet Dan. Just I was, I, I was not a prophet. I was just a good observer. <laughs> but everything is so wackadoo right now. Yeah, I just, I have no idea what's going to happen to any of these things. I don't know what the church is going to do. Like, and we were talking earlier. You and I were talking earlier about groups like you know the the Ammon Bundy crowd that went and and hijacked a fucking bird refuge or whatever it was in Oregon, a federal building, and there were no fucking consequences for that whatsoever. Yeah. And, and then, now they're just like emboldened. Yeah. These people <sighs> feel like if we are white and Christian, we get to do whatever we want in the United States of America. 
how dare anyone ask us about how dare anyone question any of it yeah it's astounding i just don't know i just i i i uh yeah it's i i I know i'm i'm at a loss for words too which is why (laughs) okay great we've chosen a topic of conversation (laughs) about which we have nothing to say because we're both so (laughs) flabbergasted baffled I, we, you know, oh, we chose that... this topic because we figured it would take us in an interesting conversational direction. But uh, now people know <laughs> these are not scripted conversations because uh, we got no script here. There is nowhere to go with this. I Well, that says a lot, though, about these times that we live in. Though, oh, right? my God. Like, like I, I have found myself completely speechless multiple times over the last couple of weeks. Right. Where it's just like, no, oh, right. Yeah, I just yeah. Let me go over here and sit in my little corner, and I like I need I need my quiet time now because oh my god! I mean, not to like completely stray, which it feels like we're in the process of. Um, I've been like, I've been totally fucking on edge. Damn. Yeah, like, like I had this thing go go down go down with my vet the other day for my my dog's vet Uh oh and i was just like beside myself right like and then like i had to step back and be like why am i so upset why am i so angry and then i'm like oh this has a little bit to do with this situation and a whole lot to do with the stupid world we live in yeah so. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, I'm talking about how I can't predict things anymore. I think <laughs> when the whole world feels completely unpredictable, yeah. it's going to put you on edge. Yeah. I do uh, not feel comfortable. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Here's the thing. Every time Joe Biden speaks and sounds like what a president sounds like. Yeah. I breathe a little bit. Uh, yeah. Every time I see an actual plan for COVID vaccination with like a rollout plan and a strategy and like a monetary figure attached to it, I go, oh, yeah, grownups are taking over. We might yeah. be OK. Yeah, I think uh, I, I, I think maybe after uh, after the dust settles next week. Uh, we might be able to start actually uh, letting go of some of the the terrors uh, and I hope so and relaxing into it. I can't tell you how much of I look forward to our show being about religion again <laughs> and not about <laughs> politics. <laughs> like and you know, isn't that the isn't that the place that the LDS Church is trying to get us to? Yes, with this with this statement, Dan. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring it back. Around. Get us focused <laughs> back on how big of idiots you guys are in your own realm, and not about how Ooh. like you're full of like insurrectionist traitors and uh, people who write things like. <laughs> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give another comment from the uh, from the comment stream. Uh, this is directed at the church. Just oh boy, just the church. You, just you. Uh, this is from. Uh, I'm not gonna say who it is. Anyway, you've repealed freedom. Your members that do not wear masks for religious or and health reasons are not allowed into many of your sacrament meetings and are not allowed in the temples. You treat them as unchristlike lepers of old. Ye <laughs> hypocrites. <laughs> you've. You've t- <laughs> what? You've taken away freedom. What did they say? You've you repealed freedom. You've repealed freedom. <laughs> You're talking about a fucking theocracy, an actual one. <laughs> the church. They don't have they, freedom. They've never promised you freedom. Freedom ever. was freedom is not part of the gig. Yeah. You have wow. there are just a series of rules that you have to obey because it's a fucking religion. <laughs> That's what you signed up for. 
<laughs> but that's literally what you signed up for. Yeah, literally every time they said, every time there was, twice a year they get up and they say, and by the way, we're the boss and you're not. Yeah. There's a higher, or yeah, higher authority. Yeah, right. and they ask you to raise your hand to affirm that you agree with that, and you do. <laughs> and you, but you, ooh, that's amazing. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Oh, I'm so tired of people's petty freedoms. You guys, just, oh, can I just God. say, it, everybody just go to sleep and don't wake up until a week and a half from now. And then we'll all be a little <laughs> more okay, maybe. I <laughs> hope. I sincerely hope. I need uh, I need that inauguration to happen I'm, and now. I, I know we don't and have, I know we have international listeners, but I know that they can't sleep either until we fix our country because America's <laughs> kind of a big deal. So sorry, everybody. We're working on it. Oh, oh God. If you want to write into us and tell us about how you're feeling, please feel free to do so. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com is the address. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Go like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And join the Members Only Lounge. Yeah! And you, you can do so. It's on Facebook, but go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com slash Members Only, and it will take you to where you, 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 you need to be. Yeah! Because it's hard to find other ones. <laughs> we did that for you guys. Be, yeah, and also, be, find us on Twitter. This one's easy. At TGI Atheist. Yeah, do that. Hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their beautiful music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. Bye-bye.